Welcome to Indianomics. The 7.8% April June GDP growth was just a little lower than Reserve Bank's forecast of 8%. Strong showing came from construction, that was up 7.9%, as you can see, and the financial sector, which grew by 12.2%. Looking at GDP from the expenditure side, uh, private consumption final ex uh, fi private final consumption expenditure grew 5.9%. Uh, well, inherently it could have been better, but it's better than the 2.8% that it clocked in Q4. Gross fixed capital formation was up 7.9%. Very good, even though it may be lower than Q4. And several previous quarters, capital formation has been much better. But 7.9 is a good number. Now the big negative. The big negative is the overall slower trajectory of growth that the economy seems to have slid into. For example, let me just give you one example now and then go to the guests. Uh, the total output that we got from a big segment called trade, hotels, transport, uh, communication and broadcasting was 6.49 trillion rupees in the quarter, April, June quarter 23. And the same segment had an output of 6.6 .6 trillion rupees four years ago. So it's static. Therefore, how good is this 7.8% growth? And more importantly, what's the outlook for GDP for the rest of the year? I have with me an elite panel, Swami Kandhi Ghosh, the Chief Economist from SBI, Pranjul Bhandari, Chief Economist from HSBC India, and A. Prasanna, the Chief Economist from ISEC, uh, uh, the primary dealer unit. Gentlemen and Pranjul, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Uh, Samyo, let me start with you. Uh, 7.8 inherently looks like a good number, though it has a lot of uh, story to it. Tell us what are the strengths you take away from this number? Yeah, thank you, Lata. I think uh, there are a couple of strengths uh, which I'll mention. I think if you look at the core GVA growth, which is basically an indicator of the private demand, that has expanded 8.7%, which was 7.3% earlier. So that's point number one. The second point that if you look at the seasonally adjusted first quarter growth starting from the last decade, it is actually the highest in the last 10 years. So that's that means that there is a momentum even in terms of the seasonal adjustment. The other good thing is that the both private funnel consumption expenditure and investment has actually expanded at rates even with a very high base of the corresponding first quarter of previous year. Uh, and the final thing is that I think overall the numbers looks good, but I think there are certain disappointments which we can discuss um, if the time permits. Okay. But, Okay, let, let me just begin with that uh, for, uh, for you, Pranjul. You know, one uh, uh, negative which I thought, the Q4 output was 43 trillion rupees. Now at 40 trillion, we are a good 7 to 8% lower than Q4. Now, pre-COVID, Q1, of course, was always lower than Q4. It's a monsoon month, it's slack season. But it used to be 2 to 4% lower. 7 to 8 means the economy is still slow. Or would you say? Uh, Lata, you know, I think the 7.8% number really has to be put in context. I think what we saw in this quarter is a lot of uh, statistical issues showing up in the GDP print. Uh, one is the base effect. Since the pandemic, uh, the June quarter has been depressed. So there was this low base effect that bumped up the numbers. And then there were all kinds of deflator issues, both for the manufacturing sector and the services sector. Uh, you know, it's a quarter in which commodity prices have fallen. And because the CSO does single deflation rather than double deflation, our sense is that manufacturing growth was overstated to some extent. Similarly with services, our services deflator has too much of goods in it. It should not have so much of goods in it. And our sense is that because goods prices fell in this quarter, again, service growth was overestimated. Together, our sense is that the deflator issues have overstated growth by about one percentage points and the low base by probably another basis, one basis points. So overall, I think growth was closer to about 6%. Uh, which is same as last quarter. Mm. You know, the 7.8% number is a bit of an exaggeration. The true growth on the ground is closer to about 6%, okay. which I think in its own is a decent number for now, given all the global headwinds that we are facing. Oh, certainly, no taking away from the fact that we are doing better than others. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, are we doing as well as we did pre-COVID? And uh, in some cases, uh, uh, you know, that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, and I was pointing out to trade hotels transport, which is clearly a sector that has not come back. Uh, just to elaborate, Pranjul uh, making the point about the first uh, quarter, 
in you know 2020 the first quarter was like minus 26 percent if you remember the lockdown quarter and therefore quarter over quarter we are uh, you know but there is this base confusion that keeps coming which is what Pranjul explained very nicely uh, Prasanna I mean uh, we were also worried about uh, private consumption not being very good in the fourth quarter that seems to have picked up now so can we take that as a strength well Lata, I mean at face value you can take it if you use the same data to feel uh, that it's not doing well last quarter I guess it's an evidence that it's doing well this quarter but then uh, the GDP data clearly, I mean, you know, you've been covering this for so long. Uh, it's not very complete or accurate kind of representation. Mm -hmm. GVA is, I think, uh, more realistic. Uh, GDP, a lot of it is estimated or imputed. Uh, and, and I think, like Pranjal was mentioning, there are other issues. I think the deflator issue is a big issue. So, so broadly, maybe better to look at nominal growth. Uh, what I find is both on GVA side and GDP side, net net, what I find is that nominal growth has slowed down from the second half of last year. But uh, most of that slowdown has happened because of inflation coming off, especially the wholesale price inflation, and that has boosted the, the real growth. So I think if I had to sum it up, that's a story I would look at. Um, and of course, because the deflator is so heavily weighted towards uh, wholesale price inflation, I think there is this kind of dis, uh, distortion which has happened in terms of real data. But I look broadly at the nominal data. I think we can conclude that the nominal spending uh, has slowed down. Okay. I, what about the gross fixed capital formation? It's been an excellent number. The bar chart will come up for our viewers. Uh, it's been very strong and even 7.9, though lower than all the last four quarters. Uh, do you think, Prasanna, at least we are building things for uh, a pickup later? So uh, there again, I think if you look at the government spending on CapEx, both the center and states, I think the growth rate was very, very uh, uh, strong in the first quarter, I think. I mean, center's numbers have always been quite good last few years. Uh, last year, state governments didn't spend so much, but this year they have started very strongly on the CapEx front. So once I take that into account and then I try to see, uh, I mean, kind of try to derive how much the private sector would have spent it still looks like the private sector capex is not picking up i think so that is still a bit of a worry but of course i think uh, the whole idea is as uh, government uh, both central and state they keep spending it can start crowding in some private investment also and we know from rba data that capacity utilization is fairly high mm. so over a period of time the private capex should also start kicking in okay so that would definitely count as a positive if the uh, government uh, sector is able to pull in a private sector. Uh, Shomyo, your thoughts on CapEx and consumption? See, Lata, there are two points regarding the CapEx. I think CapEx has continued to be very strong. If you look into the order book position of all these uh, different segments, I think that is now at the highest level of around 7.7 trillion. Then, and the credit growth continues to remain strong, even after accounting for the margin. If you look into the data which came out yesterday in terms of the credit growth also, there has continued to be a bulge. So, so therefore, the 8% data suggests that the capital expenditure is strong and there is early evidence of private investment kicking in if we actually look into the bank credit. But in terms of the consumption also, even though it has been strong, we have to be a little bit cautious because we must remember that in the first quarter, there was also a consumption uptick in terms of an uh, as you know that this, uh, the, this, this 2000 rupee notes actually were taken back into the system. So a large part of the notes came back into the system and possibly that could also have led to some amount of uh, uptick on consumption. Mm. So the second quarter needs to be, so the July to September consumption numbers need to be looked juxtaposed against the first quarter number. And if it continues at this rate, I think then consumption has possibly picked up. Okay. So this has to be taken into consideration. Okay. Actually, you know, on credit growth, uh, I'm going to quote an HSBC report and since Pranjul is there, the July credit growth is 20% because of HDFC merger. If you take away HDFC merger, the growth as HSBC correctly calculates is 14.2% or thereabouts. Uh, actually, uh, credit growth has slowed. And the other number that came out yesterday was the uh, fiscal numbers. Income tax for July is 2000 crores less than what it was in July of 2022. I mean, direct income tax is lower. Uh, overall tax GTR, gross tax revenue, is only 2.8% higher. The budget estimate is 10.5%. So, Pranjul, I mean, income is slowing. Seems to be these two indications, uh, two separate indicators.
Yes, Lata, I find the tax number extremely interesting. There are many takeaways from that. What we are seeing from the last couple of months is indirect tax growth has been extremely strong, but direct tax growth, which is income tax and corporate tax, has been quite weak. Uh, and I think that points towards a K-shaped recovery. Now, what indirect taxes hold is GST. GST is doing very well, but one of the reasons is that some of the high-priced luxury goods are taxed at a very high rate. Okay for which the demand is still very strong, and that is keeping the GST numbers extremely strong. On the other hand, we are seeing corporate tax data to be quite weak. It doesn't really match up with some of the corporate results we have. And my sense is that the organized sector, the formal sector, has been stronger than the informal sector. And I also see an urban-rural mismatch here in the sense that we are seeing some companies uh, which are rural-focused have seen better profit margin because, you know, costs and commodity prices have come down. But we are seeing they are suffering from low volume growth because rural is very weak. And that is keeping corporate tax collection weak. Mm even though we are seeing high GST collections. So this is an economy with a lot of different parts okay. to it. Some parts continue to do well. I think the upper end of urban India continues to do well, but rural India has begin, begun to struggle, and we are seeing signs of that in a lot of the uh, tax data that we, that, that we track. I take your point um, uh, entirely, uh, uh, Pranjul. Uh, the, uh, you know, the corporate tax could be lower because corporates are anticipating. After all, it's an advanced tax estimate. So I can take that, but if direct income tax falls, that is a you know that is tax deducted at source. If that falls, then I would worry a little. So it looks like the IT sector is responsible for it. I don't know, but uh, Somyo, you know, uh, we have to get into a break. So let's start. Uh, let's have something positive in terms of uh, what came from the core sector. Something is working. Core sector at eight percent, eight point three percent the week uh, the previous month. Is that something we can cling on as very positive? Yeah, that's it. Just one, one clarification sure. to the income tax data which you are saying. Yes, income tax, but you need to remember there's also there's a refund daily. Like. So if you look into the income tax data adjusted over the month, July okay. is also the month when you file returns and refunds start to kick in. So that could be one of the factors which is expecting the negative growth. And in terms of the bank credit also, which you said, I think even if you strip out the AFC at 15%, we are, actually our estimates were around 15%, that is still higher than the trend growth that happened last year. Mm. Having said that, yes, in terms of the positives, I think the core sector growth at 8% uh, is fine because in the first quarter, I think there was the electricity sector did not perform, perform well. And given that we have an erratic monsoon so far, and I think that could be a, actually a point of concern going ahead. If September rains, even if it's September rains are normal, we could be looking at an, a monsoon deficiency in excess of 10%. So that could be a matter of concern. But the good thing is that this could have a ripple effect on electricity and possibly that is one of the reasons why the port sector has done quite well in the last month. Okay. Well, that's an optimistic note to take a break from you, but there are two very important questions I have to ask you. One, uh, there is the unexpected El Nino impact, which seems to be getting worse uh, after the rains in August. And secondly, global slowdown was not there in the first half. Uh, the US actually did very well. Will it come backloaded and uh, cloud out our rate of growth? Those questions after the